Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this series, I am going to be taking the turn-based series that I already created and taking it the next step to make it a little more advanced, adding in more party members and more enemies so that you can interact and do more than just the single enemy and single player that I'd already created. So the overall goal will be to turn our game into something like this, to where it looks the same, but we actually have more enemies, and when we run into them, we now have multiple players we can select from and multiple enemies to choose from. You can still do everything here, you can attack, each one is interactive, all three enemies will attack, and you can see they each have their own health bar and the game functions really well. So let's go ahead and dive into that because each part is going to be quite full of code because we're gonna be altering what we've already done and then making it into what uh, is a little more advanced. So if you haven't done the first part, uh, which is actually six parts, I have the source code available in the comments below. You can just download the final project that I'm starting with right here, or you can go back and watch them and get a good idea of how everything works, which is what I would definitely suggest. But let's go ahead and dive on into it. So the first thing we need to do is add in some more sprites. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy the sprites I already got and just recolor them and rename them because I've already got the animations all set for them and it kind of just makes it a lot easier and a lot more simple. So what I'm going to do is just right click duplicate and I'm going to name this SPR and I'm going to go Vera and I'm going to name it walk up. So the same thing as what's already there. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy this SPR Vera because that's going to be the name of this sprite. And I'm going to create a group name it Vera, and then move it over here. And then same thing, I'm gonna just Alt Insert, and that'll copy it, paste SPR Vera so it's already ready to go, and then walk left. That way it just goes a little bit quicker. And that's all I'm gonna do a couple times over, um, because you need to have all of the animations um, for them if you want to have a fully fleshed out combat here, be able to use any of the characters in whichever direction you want. And I'll show you a couple of tricks that we can do so that you can have your characters, any one that you choose, do any sort of animation and play any sort of attack that you would want. Okay, they're not good. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go into Edit Sprite images and colorize and you can see if we just do apply all images to the sprite then all of them just turn red which is which is great and we'll just go ahead and do that Ooh, wrong button and if you've already got sprites that you want to do you can use whatever you want um, I'm just using this because uh, they're already animated and I like the look of Sarah and I think it works out great I'm going to do a party of three, so we're going to do this whole thing one more time. And again, I'm just going to copy these over. SPR, Kira, walk up. change her color and just pick a random one. Let's go with like a deep blue. That looks nice. Okay. Now once we've got them all changed, we have three characters. Now what we need to do is add in a few more enemies. So I'm gonna open up the group here and I'm gonna create a sprite and I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna add from strip. And I've already got um, some enemies here and I'll actually load these up for you guys if you want to use this sprite sheet. Uh, just click remove background first and you can open it up. 
And you can see that there are some enemies here, and there's some really cool looking ones. So I'm going to choose, just do a little bit differently than what I showed you guys. We're going to go with one of those bats, because bats are a good enemy to have. A little bit wider. Okay, so we're going to take a bat, we're going to transform, we're going to trim it down to the right size. You can name it SPR bat, center it. Then we're going to add one more enemy. Add from strip again. Remove background, open it up, and we'll put in one of these bunnies, just because I think these bunnies look really funny. Okay. So now we have a bunny, we have a bat, and we have a ninja. Kind of a strange combination, but it's going to work. Make sure you center them. Now we've got three enemies and three sprites, which is great. Now we're going to open up the objects because we need to actually make objects for each of these as well. Now the quick way to do this is uh, on the characters, we're going to go ahead and copy because we actually want most of the same properties here. So we're going to go ahead and copy Sarah and we're going to just name it the same thing uh, that our sprites are. So OBG, OBJ Vera, Vera. Uh, just walk down and copy that one over. OBJ Kira. And the parents are already set since we copied it. And for the enemies, what I'm going to actually do is create a new enemy for each one. Because I actually want to set um, a few things here. So we're going to do OBJ Bat first. Set the parent. Otherwise you'll have issues when you do this. Let's drag in some code. Uh, after we, of course, create, use the create event. And then let's think, okay. I'm gonna make this a little larger. So the first thing we wanna do um, is event inherited because we want the parent code to come into here. Um, now, if you remember, when we did the enemy stats, we'll take a look at them. This sets up all of the uh, default stats for the enemies. So we've got health, energy, damage, defense, uh, and then we've got their name and the experience. So Event Inherited takes all of that, puts it into each enemy. But we want to make some of these enemies unique. So for the bat, let's make him max health equals 5. Uh, and then for damage, we'll put him to 1. And then we'll go down here. And for the name, we want to change the name because we don't want default to show up there. We'll put bat, and we'll put the XP to something like 3 because he's a lot weaker. Okay, and then that's all we need for the bat right now because is as it is a child of enemy parent, it's going to inherit all of the step events already, so it's going to already do all of these things, which is great. What we also want to do, though, is create one more enemy. OBJ bunny, set the sprite, set the parent, add in a create event, drag in some code, and do the same thing. Ooh. Always make sure you do event inherited when you have parents. And then I want to do, uh, let's go with max health, 15 damage equals three, and we'll go with, uh, let's make sure I have the name. I think it's just name, yep. We're gonna call him Doom Bunny. And XP will equal 10. Okay, so now we've got three players, three enemies, and we're gonna work at setting up the foundation for getting them spawned in. So we need to go next into the enemy parent where we've been a little bit already. And we're going to create a couple of arrays here inside of the create event here because we want each of the children to inherit them. So the first thing we're going to do is create an array called enemy list. Now an array is an object that can hold a list of things. And it can hold a list of the same types of objects. So if we're going to put in um, an array of, of objects, it can hold as many objects as we want. But if we were to put in an array of 
like numbers or strings, then it could only hold those things, depending on the kind of array it is. For what we want to do here is we're going to do a, uh, create a master enemy list, and it's just going to hold every kind of enemy that we're going to have in the game. So to start off, we put zero because we want to start at zero because that's where computers begin counting. And we're just going to list them as what they are. And the order that we list them in doesn't really matter. Uh, and if you add more enemies, I would recommend updating this list. It can take a little bit of time if you've got a lot, but it's going to be much, much faster to do this than really any other way. So once we have the master enemy list, we're going to create an array um, called my group. And what we're going to do here is it is every child of the enemy is going to have a my group. And so when you run into it, it's going to choose a, a list of three enemies, basically. It's going to have three enemies that you fight each time. And you can set this up to be however many you want. But the way I'm going to do this is the first one, zero, is going to be self.objectindex. What this means is that there's going to be three enemies you fight, and the first one will always be the one that you actually run into. So if we go to our room, you can see we've got three ninjas here. We would always want there to be at least one ninja in the group we fight. Because it wouldn't really make much sense if we ran into a ninja and there were no ninjas there. Although I guess for ninjas it might make sense since you wouldn't see them. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add in a bat over here and a bunny over here. And then we're going to set my group... One, this is going to be kind of confusing, so bear with me here. We're going to say it is going to be equal to enemy list, and we're going to use a function called I random range 0 to 2. And what this is going to do is it chooses a number between 0 and 2, so 0, 1, and 2. And then it puts it onto here from the enemy list. So when we spawn, or when we run into an enemy, it can choose between all three of these, or you can change this to whatever number you want. And a really good way to do this would actually be using another function called array length 1D. And what this would do is actually know exactly the length. Is the length is how many entries there are in the array, and say uh, choose between the first and the last one, basically. So this would say, as long as you grew your enemy list, like if we had 15 more enemies, you wouldn't have to touch this at all, which is really kind of nice. And we can actually just copy this, paste it over, and now we have an enemy group of size 3, where the enemies, besides the first one, are all random. Awesome. And we can actually go ahead and play this right here, because the code in, that we've already done is kind of um, dynamic, and it will accept new enemies already. So we can run into the bunny and the bat, and we can already fight them, which is kind of cool. And we've already set their names and everything up, so we can, we can actually already fight this bat. Now, we have set up the group for the enemies, but we haven't um, spawned them in yet. That's going to be actually on the next part that we do. I still want to do a few more things before we end this part, though, to set up the next one, because the next part's going to be kind of long, and we have to make sure we got everything set up ready to go there. So I want to go into the battle controller, into the create event, and we're going to add in a few more variables. Um, we're going to add a few more arrays, because once you start using multiples of really anything that you, you want to access on the fly or dynamically and you don't know specifically which, you, which one you're going to choose, you, arrays are just invaluable. Like once we have three characters and three enemies on the screen, well you will scroll through and you'll choose which character you want to fight with. Um, but you're not going to know if it's OBJ Sarah specifically because they can choose from different ones. So you want to be able to have an array that says if they choose the second character and the first enemy, then the second character does damage to the first enemy because you aren't going to know which ones are which just within the arrays. And they are extremely invaluable and we're going to use them more and more as we go on with this series. So we're going to create two arrays. Um, we're going to make them global and there will be player party and enemy party. Player party right now 
we're going to set up with the players that we already have. So we're going to set this up with OBJ Sarah, uh, OBJ Vera, and OBJ Kira. And then we're not going to touch the enemy party right now because that's something we're going to dynamically spawn in every time we collide with an enemy. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to create an object and we're going to call it null, N-U-L-L. -L. We're not going to make it visible. We're not going to do anything with it. Just going to click OK. Null is a programming term that when something has no value, it's null. And since I come from a programming background, I like to use this and incorporate it into Game Maker since it doesn't have it by default. In the enemy party array, when we kill an enemy, we're going to actually set it to null. That way we know it's dead. Same thing, we can use it for a lot of different things as well. I like having null. It's a very powerful tool. So for now, that's going to be it. This, is, this covers the first part of transforming our one party, one enemy turn-based game into a full party, multiple enemy turn-based game. Much more uh, exciting to actually play around with. Thank you guys for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I get back to everyone who asks me something. And I will put up the full project completed so that you can download that, play with it if that's what you'd like to do instead of just following along with these series. That way you can see exactly what I did, how I did it. And it's also fully commented, so it's great if you want to see what things do and how they work. Uh, as always, until next time, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later.